Wow. That was one of the most difficult debugging exercises of my entire life. But the thing finally works. I'm so happy! I learned a lot in the process of getting this code working, and I would like to share that with you. My name is Aaron Lantraman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and I run a team of students called Retrofuturistic Hardware, Music, Gaming, and Computing as part of the Vertically Integrated Projects program at Georgia Tech. One thing we're working on is what I'm calling the Retcom 87 project. That's a homebrew computer themed around the year 1987 and technologies available in 1987 and before that. And that's based on the W65C265SXB development board by Western Design Center. I've made a board to interface it with the TMS9118, which is a variation of the better known TMS9918 video display processor. The main advantage of the 9118 is that you can use it with a couple of RAM chips that take just plus 5 volts, whereas the 9918 needs 8 old RAM chips that also require minus 5 and minus 12 volts without some significant workarounds. Once again, here's my board for interfacing the TMS9118 with the Western Design Center W65C265SXB microcontroller board. It has a couple of bodge wires, so I'll need to spin a new version of this board. So what does it do? Well, right now it just prints out the letter A a bunch of times. And I made these A's so that the left leg is a little bit longer than the right, so that each row has some pixels. The code I'm about to show you was assembled using NIC and ASM. The 65C265 is a microcontroller based on the 65816 instruction set that was used in the Apple II GS. The 65816 itself is a 16-bit extension of the better-known 6502. The Texas Instruments video chip has its own video RAM, and to interface it, you just read and write from two memory locations. One of them I'm calling vData is for actually reading and writing from that VRAM. The other I'm calling vreg is for reading and writing from various registers. You also need to write to vreg in order to set up the writing of the data from the video RAM or to read from it. The chip has eight registers, and if we scroll down here to the bottom, we see the various values we want to plug into those eight registers to put the chip into a two-color text mode. Now, in order to actually write these registers to the chip, what you do is you basically write to that vreg twice. So first, you write the data, and then you write a code indicating what register you would like to write that data to. That's a little counterintuitive to me. I would imagine writing the register identifier first and then writing the data you want to write, but that's just the way it works. So there's a whole bunch of debugging stuff in here. I'll come back to that. The main thing I have in here is just a loop. I'm using the X register to index into that table of values we want to write. And for the register identifier, notice I'm starting at hex 80 instead of 0. That's because to identify a register, you set the most significant bit. So that's what that 8 is doing here. So as I go through the loop, I'm incrementing x and y. And then I'm comparing y here to 88, which is the final identifier in that sequence. And the main thing I want to point out is this no-op here. It turns out that the chip can only handle data coming in either to the register address or to the data address at a certain speed, and my microcontroller can write faster than that. So in order to get this to work, I had to put a no-op here. And remember, you're writing to the same memory location twice. So each register write is a two-part sequence. And if it gets confused about that and, say, misses the second write, and then it assumes that the next write here is that second write, it can get all sorts of confused to the point that you have to reset the chip. 
and the results of these timing glitches can be quite inconsistent. Sometimes it might work without the no-op. In this particular case, it didn't, but in experimenting with other parts of the code, you can get all kinds of variations. You really can't assume anything. All right, so that bit of code sets up the processor for text mode. So here, I'm basically taking the data for the letter A, the actual picture of the letter A, and writing that into what it calls pattern data RAM. So if I scroll down here, ah, there we go. So here you can see a little binary picture of a letter A. In some modes, it uses all eight bits in text mode. It only uses the first six on the left, so it ignores the two on the right. Anyway, what we have here is a little loop to read that from the CPU side and write it into the VRAM. So the way that works is you send it the low byte of the place of the VRAM you want to write. You send that to that VREG address, and then you send the high byte. And notice here I have this little four zero because you actually have to set the second bit from the left you have to set that high. So you have to OR your address, your high byte of the address by four zero hex here. That tripped me up a lot. I overlooked that and I posted this uh, very upset video where I was trying to figure out what was going on. Basically, if you don't do this, then it basically means that the auto increment happens before the write. Oh, I should mention, when you are writing data, you only have to set up that first address after that, each time you write, it increments the pointer and the video RAM for you. So I use my X register and my little for loop here. I read the data and then I write it to that VData address. In this particular case, I didn't need to put any no ops, just all the computation needed in here to perform this comparison and loop was enough of a delay after each of the writes. But again, if you start trying to write too fast, you'll lose rights and get all kinds of weird confusion that is inconsistent each time you run the code. You'll get something different. Okay, so that sets up the pattern for the letter A, for that A tile. I need to actually take the screen data of what characters are being shown and fill that in. Here it's more convenient to actually use the X register in 16-bit mode instead of 8-bit mode because I have 960 spots on the screen I want to fill. So I've set this up so that the actual character data of what characters we're displaying is at 800 hex. Again, when I send that, I send the low byte first and then the high byte, but that high byte I need to OR with 40 hex. Now this ORing with a 40 hex, you only do this when you're writing. Later I'll show you how you can read from the video RAM. There you don't do that ORing. Anyway, I set up that A character in the first pattern, so I want to fill up that memory with zeros. Here, because I'm starting with this counter at 960 and then counting down, my loop is a little bit tighter. So for this to work, I actually had to put a no op here. Otherwise, it would miss the writes and it wouldn't fill in the full memory. And sometimes it would just do other weird things. One thing I want to mention is that when you're running these kinds of experiments, trying out your code, occasionally you'll get confused by memory values that you're reading that are from previous runs of your program where you're not actually writing the memory you think you are. So I got into a habit of basically always changing something. Maybe it was the particular shape down here. I would add a one down here somewhere. Basically to make sure that the things that were being written were really being written. Because I even found if I unplugged the thing and plugged it back in and waited a few seconds between unplugging it and plugging it back in, it would still maintain a good chunk of the memory. I was surprised by that. Anyway, I just want to mention that you need to watch out for that. All right, so we filled it in. Then you can see everything on the screen. The last thing I wanted to test was the ability to read from the video RAM. Now, this is one of the trickiest things. Here I set the X register back to 8-bit mode because that's convenient. And here I set the address I'm reading from. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read in the data for that character A. 
and basically then check in the monitor to see if at address 200 on the CPU side, I see this data. So I'm not going to bother showing you that now. Just believe it that it works. Anyway, the main thing that really tripped me up here is that while I didn't need a no-op here in the loop, I needed a no-op here before I started reading the data. And if I didn't put in that little delay, the screen went blank. Now, if there's weird timing things happening when I'm writing information to the chip and I'm writing it too fast, I would expect weird things to happen. But the fact that something weird happened even when I was trying to read too fast is really disturbing to me. You know, there might be a problem in my hardware. I'm not sure what might cause that. But anyway, when I put a no up here, that fixed it. So the timing on this thing is really confusing. So all of that business with the delays took me ages to figure out. But this little line right here, where I disabled the interrupts, that was the most challenging of all. I had some extremely sporadic issues where the thing would just freak out and I would have to reset it. I finally figured out that the 65C265 has a built-in monitor that's running that you can use to load programs and run programs and look at registers, yada, yada. That monitor uses some I.O. routines that I think involve interrupts. And basically, when you're doing stuff with the video chip, it does not like being interrupted while you're messing with it. So all those places where you do these double writes to VREG to write data and then write what you're writing to, if something interrupts that process, you get sort of off cycle and it gets confused. Or if you start writing or reading from the video RAM and that gets interrupted, you wind up getting confused. I wound up with some strange cases where I got different colors on my screen, basically based on what the last value of my little letter here, basically that picture data was getting interpreted as a color. And I was finally figuring out that things were getting off kilter. And basically I was sending in information, but some of it was getting missed and it was interpreting it in the wrong way. So once I disabled interrupts, it became more consistent. Now that makes things difficult if you want to do some debugging. So down here, I use some routines in the monitor in order to print out the accumulator, basically to tell me what data was being written. And also I then did a transfer from X to the accumulator to see what index I was writing to. And I found that when I put these debugging routines, some of these glitches seem to happen more often. So the problem is to actually run these, I have to enable the interrupts again, but then I'm careful to disable them in order to then not confuse the VDP. And you can do this and it still gives you some useful debugging information. But the thing you have to remember is that just the mere act of adding this stuff in is going to make it a bit more jank overall and you'll get some sporadic problems possibly.